Right. Welcome, everybody. Hello. I hope you have a good time, be it having fun or taking a good nap. Uh, so this is our topic for today. And a quick word about uh, where we come from, where we work at the Evolving Web. It's a digital agency that does everything that is listed in there, pretty much. So all the, all the steps of a big web project that you can imagine. And here are some of our interesting clients to talk. Um, you can see a lot of higher ed in here, uh, but we have government and health as well as some of our greatest clients. We are also uh, a very diverse team of about 80 people from different places and the whole world. And just out of fun, um, can anyone recognize all the flags in here? Might be a bit tricky to get all of them. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna tell you. Eh? No cheating, no cheating. The the game here is that we want propose is um, you get to pick which pair represents our national nationalities of origin. Let's let's do a quick uh, a quick uh, raising hands here just to warm up everybody. Who thinks it's A? Some, yeah, yeah. I just repeat the question. So, which which pair represents our nationalities? Yeah. Okay. So, who who thinks it's A? Some, B. Uh, no, it'll make it easy. No, it will not make it easy. <laughs> so who thinks it's B then? <coughs> Your hands. C. D. One. E. Oh, a few more hands. F. Oh, a lot more hands. G, H, okay, that was a bit of a spread, but there was some concentration there. Um, you wanna introduce yourself? Yes, so uh, hello, hello everybody. My name is Robert Ngo, I'm a solution architect at Yvonne Bing Web, and I have been doing Drupal since Drupal 7, uh, like 40 years ago since I were back in Vietnam. And I'm Franz, I also have 14 years of uh, Drupal experience, and I'm also a solutions architect. Um, and I started working right after I left my school in Brazil as well. So that was my country of origin. So if you guessed correctly, that was C. <laughs> All right, so warm up done. Yeah, so. For the agenda today, uh, we would like to uh, present about the problem, a use case that we have in a recent project. Uh, we will uh, present the requirement of the project, the system architecture, the approach that we choose, and <clears throat> then, uh, and of course, the, the solution that we chose is the feed module. And in this project, uh, we, talk, we need to create some custom workflow for our feed importation. And that's why I think we, it's quite interesting to make a presentation about how we go through each and every step there. In reality, you will not need to, to go through all of those steps because feed ecosystem is already really strong. You can basically create an importation without custom code. So, and then we also mentioned some, uh, some common problem that we have when working with, with feed, which is about how to uh, manipulating data before you import, how do you chaining it, and how do you deal with the multilingual content, because we are come from Canada, we need to work with English and French. And uh, at the end, we will talk a bit about the lesson learned in this particular project and uh, what we found about uh, this solution. So yeah, it's really solutions architect uh, talk here. Um, does anyone know Beneva? You have people? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, a big insurance company in Canada. Um, yeah, it's situated in Quebec, but it uh, serves the whole 
Canada territory. Um, it is, particularly to this project, is interesting to mention, it was actually um, a merger between two, two already big insurance companies in there. So they came up with a new name and a new structure. And then that's part of the problem that we had because uh, there are also multiple sources of data that have to be um, combined together. So this, um, this tool here is our focus here. It's in their website. By the way, it's a very fast and beautiful website if you want to check yourselves. It is recommended. Um, and this is a tool that allows you to search uh, for an advisor based on your institution. So institution, you work in an institution, it is institution served by Beneva, and they will provide you a recommendation of an advisor here. Um, and we'll uh, talk a little bit about that. Um, so the initial requirements was that we had to pull data from two different sources. And I'll explain a bit about what are these sources. And, and these are our first thoughts, the thoughts you have on like first read the problem. OK, so yeah. Um, they will all be in a standard format, we, the data that we're going to have. So it will be, you know, just fetch the data. Um, we can fetch it all from Drupal. Uh, all of them will be very real, available and reliable. And you just need a simple request for the data. And it will be fetched in a timely manner, ready to process. So these are the first assumptions you make when you start working on a problem. And then, um, the two different sources here is, is because, if you go back to here, what they wanted to do, wanted to provide their clients, is um, a way in which they can very uh, dynamically um, swap the, the advisors that are recommended for each institution uh, based on uh, some business rules to balance. So an advisor doesn't get too many. Uh, other advisors also get the same amount of uh, requests. So they have a list of all the advisors, but they also have a list of these associations of advisors per institution, which will be daily re renovated. So that's why we have to pull it. And that's where the BI comes from, because the business intelligence tool is what provides that, that sort of data to us. So yeah, easy, easy problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> So we come in and do some uh, primary discovery on the system, and we discover a few things. Like the first, the two company is big, and it has been there for decades. So the legacy architecture is hard to change. Not to mention that it is, there are so many microservices running around the company. So it means, at first we say, oh, the data is not standardized. How about we just standardize the data before importing into Drupal? But that is not impossible. That is not possible, actually. <laughs> and <clears throat> so the, the data is consumed by all the microservices. We cannot do anything about that. Just take it and import it. And if we fetch it in directly into Drupal, which means Drupal, we need to make a request into that server and then get the response. That is not the case because the size hold, it holds on, uh, on Acquia. And then the BI system is housed inside the VPN. There's no way for Acquia to get in there and get, and, and, and get the data out. And we also think, OK, the data source can be reliable. If we fetch it, we should get it. We should get something. But what would happen if there are some migration upgrade process going on during that synchronization? That is a risk we need to, to cow into. And uh, so we take a step back and we look through the system and we discover that, okay, this is the, the very um, basic look of the system. We can see that Drupal size is what we are building. We have an entity repository where it's providing a list of advisor. And the second one is the BI system set inside a VPN. And we need to build a solution to fetch those two data, transform them, merge them, and then import it into Drupal. The uh, entity repository is in Java CMS. The BI system, yeah, also in, it, it is in the VPN, as I said. So <clears throat> we, 
need to have a solution so that we need to call for the situation where what if a new advisor is at during the day? What if they remove an advisor during the day? And that need to be mapped correctly with the data from the institution coming from the BI system. Not to mention that all the content need to be bilingual. They are mapping and they share the same UUID. So, and their synchronization needs to happen every night. So it's a recurring, which means like, if today I have 100 advisors, tomorrow I have 150, we will add 150. The order 100 will stay there. Or if they change a name, they have an S in the name, it needs to be updated as well. So here is an example of the, uh, the JSON file that we get from, uh, from the list of advisors, which is the, anti the advisor repository. And because the system is on, the structure is not optimal, and uh, some, sometimes when we want to get an attribute in there, uh, we need to dig down quite deep. This is just a very uh, simple one, but there are some other property uh, that are more complex to get. Uh, on the other hand, we also have the, uh, the sample of the JSON file received from the institution. And as you can see here, we have the number of conseils, which is like the, the ID on their system uh, represent their advisor. But in this system, it's just a part of the string. On the entity repository, it will be a bit more than that. It concludes with some prefix and some suffix. So during the transformation of data, we need to account for that information. Okay, so not as easy, yeah? To summarize, we have this, uh, make sure it is a daily resynchronization of all these sources, so it's always consistent. Uh, we have multiple data sources. Uh, we have VPN restrictions. We can't simply fetch it. And we have, as Robert was explaining, some sophisticated file field mapping to be done, along with some transformations as well. Um, and finally, we have to combine the imported data. Uh, into existing entities. So we'll talk a little bit about what are the approaches that we decided to take to attack this, uh, these problems. So we, need a, we needed a fail-safe uh, solution, first of all, uh, because of what we mentioned before, being uh, under VPN, being uh, not always reliable, that we, we needed a solution that could be able to handle these errors and faults and still still work. Um, we needed something to, uh, that would be easy to manage on the processing side of things, um, easy to modify the data, easy to transform. We, we use the term tamper here because feeds uh, use that. We'll talk a bit more later. And a recurring importation, which means it'll be running all the time and be able to update items as we go. Um, this is a bit of what our solution actually looks like in the end <laughs> after, of course, a lot of back and forth. Um, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit of a complicated chart, uh, but as you can see, we, had, we basically had the BI system had to post the data for us so we can then be able to get it because it's under the VPN. And then there is a long process of you know, receiving this data, triggering another feed, trigger another import from the other uh, entity repository to first then update the list of advisors, if there is some that need update, new ones or, or removed ones. Um, and in, in parallel to that, we are saving the data received from the BI um, in an, a format that, uh, in a JSON format, so we can go back to it later. Um, and once you're done with importing those advisors, uh, we trigger that final importation. So it's like a oh, back and forth process between two importers. And once you're done, we'll have the data finally synchronized. So we chose feeds uh, for a few, a few reasons, um, but um, it's not obviously the only way to do this. It could be done in other ways. Um, I will just briefly mention it could be done with migrate as well, 
uh, but we chose feeds because of uh, the way it's structured, especially in terms of the UI. Um, it would be interesting to have that, that flexibility. And I'll give you a, a brief overview of feeds for those who don't, don't know. So it's, it's a contrib module in Drupal. It's a, very, it's a very old module. It means it's been there for a long time. It's been refactored, it's been redone for Drupal 8, and it's still uh, been well maintained, has uh, been, been, been uh, redesigned, re uh, improved all the time. And it's, uh, it's very pluggable. It has always been very pluggable. It's always been a, a big, a big uh, feature of it. And it supports like a lot of these import formatters, form formats. Um, it has a very good UI where you can actually build your whole imported from, uh, from fetching the data all the way to saving it into entities. And uh, we'll talk a bit about how it does the mapping and uh, how we can actually modify the data, transform it, and there are multiple ways of doing. And it also is very easy to set up for a periodic importation. Yeah, just like I mentioned, um, you can actually build the whole, in, a whole import without custom code. Um, there's a lot of things available out of the box, and there are additional modules that you can use. I'll briefly mention them. Uh, that extend this, and you can use these as these plugins in uh, every step of the process and build uh, feeds imported without any custom code. So this is a very interesting feature for, for content uh, editors, for site builders. Um, here's some of, the, some of the modules that allow you to extend feeds a bit more. I'm not going to talk about all of them, um, but the tamper is for sure the most commonly used one, which allows you uh, another, another level of plugins to transform each field, each, the data of each field individually before importing it. Um, in our case, however, we could not simply use it as out of the box. We did have to uh, implement some customizations and then Robert will talk about it. Yeah, so in our case, we need to create like a custom feed workflow. <clears throat> and what does the custom feed workflow? Okay, uh, so the reason that we need to build a custom feed workflow is we know we, we want to combine multiple data sources, like, like I explained in the, in the introduction. We also need to map, have a custom mapping logic, and we also need to create a custom processor because for some other technical decision, we choose the custom entity and out of the box, it doesn't support it. So here's what it looks like for a custom feed workflow. So there are three steps. First, fetch it, parx it, and then process it. So with the fetcher is something that get the API, get data from the API, and, and it will, uh, the output will be a raw fetch result object, which consists of an array of the JSON object. The parser is where you can Transform it, transform it the way that <clears throat> into the object, the output of the parser stage, it's an array of the item of the structure that you want. In normal case, we will not touch this part, but in some case, you can create an item class that extend the base class, base item class, where you can customize the structure the way that we want. That will help for the next step, which is for the processor. Processor is like basically import those data into either a node entity or either media entity or in our case it is the custom entity. <clears throat> so uh, here we are talking about the first step which is about the fetcher. Uh, let, me, let me go a bit faster and go to the structure of why do we need to have a custom fetcher. So this is our case. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six endpoints that provide advisor of different type and the funny thing is that we, in order to get advisor in English and in, uh, in, in French, we need to make two cones to two order to two endpoint. No question asked because that is the structure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we need to build a custom fetcher to combine all of those, and the output of it will be an array of all the advisor, and it will be mapping English and French together because remember we have the UUID, which is something that we can trust. So in order to do that, I would like to go back here. 
I think it's here. Yeah. So here, this is a sample code of, uh, this is a simplified version of what we did uh, to create a, a custom fetcher like this. Basically, we will create, we will extend the HTTP fetcher and we will uh, add the annotation in here, which is the feed fetcher. You put in ID in there and basically it will, when we override the HTTP fetcher from feed, uh, we will need to provide what we want inside the fetch method. So in our case, we look through the list of language, which is English and French. We also look through the list of the query list, which is the type of the advisor. And then in there, you will suffer manipulating data and create the array that we want. And then we just throw it back as a fetcher result. We wrap it in a fetcher result and throw it back. That will go to the next step, go to the parser. <clears throat> and in our case, why do we want it? Not only because we want to combine data from different sources, but we want to uh, provide additional header into the request. Because our request, uh, we need to send some authentication header in there. And we need to set some query, some special query in there to get the right data we want. So this is the reason why we need to have a custom fetcher in our, in our solution. The next thing that we talk about is the parser and the item. So the parser by default, if we install uh, feed, it will provide default parser. If we install feed extens extensible parser, we will have parser from JSON, which is very valuable. Uh, easy to use and so by default we have on this kind of parser and we basically we don't need to, uh, to, to to custom it and honestly I don't see the real rea reason why we need to override it so just use it at each is <clears throat> and then here in our in our case uh, okay let's go to the next step which is the processor um, so the processor we have the custom entity so in order to create a custom uh, processor for feed, we again, we will extend the class entity processor bay, and it's also come with the annotation here. And the destination, we will just uh, specify the enti entity ID here. So on the content, we'll be, mapping, we'll be uh, processed and put it into that type of entity. And here, there's, um, there's the mapping function this is the place where we can do additional tasks, like if you can, if you want to add uh, additional information into that entity. In 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 in, in normal case, basically we just leave it as The next part we will talk about entering data before importing into Drupal. All right. So a few problems solved on the source of the data. Now we need to make sure we can can alter them in the right way we want. So there are a few ways you can alter the data in feeds, using feeds, um, and we're listing them here. We would, would separate in two categories here, which is using the temper module, feeds temper, uh, like I mentioned before, and using event subscriber. It's the events API from Drupal itself. Um, so in, in each of them, you have two different ways to do it. So in the first one, you can use um, the temper plugins that are already available out of the box, no need to custom code. And if you really need something very special, then a custom feeds temper plugin. You just write it and use it. Um, for the events, you have two events there for two different use cases. And we'll talk a bit about that. Um, you would, I'm not sure if it is it, is it later here? Yeah, okay. Just make sure I don't, don't have to go back. So for feeds temper, um, here are some of the common feeds temper plugins that are available. So these are normal transformations, usually ones you do in strings, string transformations. Um, there might be even more than this, but these are the most common. And here's an example on the right of a custom temper plugin. So I mentioned at the beginning, this was a merger of two, uh, two big companies. And so we had to treat that as well. There was this one field that we needed to detect if it come from one or the other, and then be able to uh, determine that and then assign the right value. So it's a very simple plugin. There is I mean, more metadata, more metadata into this code than actual 
actual logic. Um, but it is as simple to create. You just use the annotation for a temper plugin, describe what it's doing, and then all you have to do uh, is implement the temp temper function that will basically receive the data from a specific field and then return the transform data. If we're using events, um, it's why why would you need to use events? Like I said, the temper is able to transform the data for a single field. So, for, but sometimes you want to transform the whole item, like Robert was describing. The item is a is a collection of fields. It's one advisor, for example, and then you want to make a transformation that, for example, can read through multiple properties of this item, and then make an, a transformation to one or multiple. Um, properties accordingly. So you would use the first uh, the first event that is triggered by feeds, uh, which is the after parse base. This this one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, that we have another example here. So um, if you're not familiar with events API in Drupal. Um, it is uh, you basically it's 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 a event event based system. It's a subscribe based system. You uh, have to declare a service in Drupal that will subscribe to a, a specific event, and then you have to implement uh, a method that would be responding to that event. Uh, I would like to add in one thing in here. So, the example about the event and the uh, and the custom after after proxy event here. I just get it directly from the feed documentation. So because that is the simplified version and it's just very clear to understand. So for example, the after parks version here, to in, in order to create it, basically we just extend the after parks and then we can apply it to the type of feed that we want. And then we can enter the enter data the way that we want in the enter item method. Sorry. <laughs> And the second one is about the event subscriber. So, um, so by implementing the event subscriber interface, we can def define when do we want to enter data in there. And in this, uh, at this moment, if we if we find the right moment, which is like feed event parks after the parks, we will be able to get on the data in here and do some additional um, transformation at this moment. So this example is also come from their uh, feed uh, documentation. Uh, next, we would like to talk about the chaining fish uh, and chaining feed, like Franz showed in the diagram before. Like when we finish the import, the first importation, it, we need to trigger the second one. And in order to do that, there are several ways. Um, the first way is to use a module named feed dependency. Uh, it provides a UI where you can define, okay, after running this, running that, which work well. But in our case, it's a bit more tricky because we need to define the right moment to run it. So we decide to go with the way uh, the event subscriber again. Uh, so by default, feed uh, provides several events, which we can find more in this, um, in this particular link here. And uh, basically, the implementation is fairly simple. Uh, we declare an event that extend the event subscriber interface. And in this case, we have the feed event name import finish. Okay, when this is finished, let's run the additional task that I'm telling here. So the additional task is here. We basically, I have a very simple logic. I would get the type of the current feed. If it is of type feed one, then I will trigger this feed number two. And if in the other context, we need to feed number three to run after the feed number two, we can set it up this way. So uh, the setup is simple and easy to understand. And uh, I would strongly recommend to have a look into the feed event uh, file here. It come up with some additional feed event where you, it will have us to manipulate the feed in uh, various way at the right moment. Uh, the next part that we are talking about is the importation of the multilingual content. So uh, here, um, there's a funny thing. So I was looking for a solution on uh, how to import it using feed, and I stumbled on an issue on Drupal. There's somebody say, I need a documentation on feed to, 
to, to instruct how to import multilingual content. And there's a comment, there's somebody comment, uh, we should do this like this, and that issue is still open, and the documentation is still not up to date. So I, I want to give it in here, the importation of multilingual content is actually simple. Uh, by in the, mapping in the mapping step, we basically we can specify the content from the source, can go into a specific field, for example, in this case, it's the field name, and then you can specify it in that language. So in our case here, we can uh, map the English and the French into uh, two different um, versions of the node. So that is uh, on the manipulation step that we have done on the, uh, on the feed importation in our system. The reality solution can be a bit more, uh, uh, it consists of a bit more step, more custom logic based on our business logic, but uh, in, uh, but the base structure is like this, and we did go through each and every step to customize our workflow. And in reality, in other use case, uh, we do think that we don't need to do those kind of things because feed already provide enough tools for us to, to do uh, importation without uh, going through all the hassle of creating custom plugin like this. Well, Lastly, we have a few more uh, lessons learned during the process um, that we didn't mention so far, uh, but it's still important to say. Uh, we learned that uh, being able to log and do more logging during the process was very uh, helpful to understand where in this long process the f it was failing or was not working as expected. Um, we also were able to set notification channels we can use Slack or email to notify when there is a problem. For example, the importation failed or this importation was incomplete. So we can jump in and then uh, investigate further. Um, feeds when running in the background, we learned that how uh, you, sometimes you have to be patient depending on what your setup is. If it's a long feed, it might be imported halfway and then waiting for the next run run to finish. So you have to keep that in mind. And, and finally, we had also to develop some additional tools just to visualize the data we were importing to, set, to spot anom anomalies. So we saw that the data imported was quite, quite complex. So sometimes you had to write a script just to go into it, make sure everything was imported correctly, multilingual, or else if, if uh, items were correctly combined and all of that. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's it for a presentation part of it. Um. We have a few minutes for questions if you have. So. Yeah, for the problem with the VPN, so uh, we say that if the data cannot come to us, we will come to it. And uh, so we write a script in the VPN, get the data, and post it to our endpoint. So it will come to us. Yeah. And then that is the starting point of the whole process, because when our endpoint receives something, it will start trigger, after storing those information temporarily somewhere, we will start trigger the first feed to import the uh, advisor entity. And when it is already done, we go circle back to the data that we received before and run the second feed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, actually, I found that the custom plugin, uh, the custom temper plugin is super simple to do. And there are many documentation that we can file on Drupal.org. Uh, basically, we just extend the class, and then we have uh, full control on how we want to manipulate data in there. Yep. Yes. Sorry, I can delete. Uh, 
Yeah, by default in, in feed, there is a configuration where you can set that that information is not uh, available in the, up, the incoming data. It will be deleted on the order. Yeah. There is a configuration whether you want to keep them or you want to delete them. Yeah. I would imagine on the same note you could um, not just not delete, you could also like unpublish it or archive it or something like that. Yeah. Be untampered, right? No, actually that isn't that doesn't need a tamper oh. because that is built in, 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 in feed. Right, right, right. There's a configuration for that, yes. Oh nice. Yeah. Yes. Is there a configuration for that? Not sure. I don't think so. Yeah. But it's a very good point for the like schematic of the disk as an input, as a display file. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. So kind of playing devil's advocate, many would say that this was like the solution for some customers. What was the like the driving use case that said we're not going to do it custom code, we're going to do it in feeds? What was it that feeds offered that was you know kind of like already out of the box there that made this the best solution versus just going custom? Yeah, by default, like feed already provide a synchronization uh, mechanism which is quite robust. You can s simply set it to import data from a source, let's say a JSON source, an XML source, or RSS source into Drupal, into a single uh, entity in Drupal, and you can configure it to go into one uh, content type, and you can ma easily map it, each field of the data into a field in your, uh, your node, uh, your content type. And it's very easy to, let's say we need to do some basic temper, we need to trim on the uh, space, we need to make on the text uppercase or something like that. You need to uh, encode or decode um, URL string. Uh, stuff like that are built in, already built in, and we don't need to do anything. And not to mention that the uh, periodic importation is already built in, and it runs through cron, through the Q API. So, so by default, it provides enough uh, tools for us to do the importation. Yes. Yeah. I just want to add that um, in general, our design choice is to do as little custom code as possible because it's always harder to maintain in the long run. So a module as strong as feeds, we would like to keep it as close as possible to what it provides. So that's why we, we choose feeds, which has um, uh, plugins for everything. So every, every custom code we wrote is either plugins or event uh, subscribing. Yes. Yes. Um, you may have answered this in some shape or form, but have either one of you or anybody in the company actually contributed to feeds and the tampers and all that? Yeah, actually, we can answer that question because Fran is the former maintainer <laughs> of feed, ah, and he yeah. is also the maintainer of feed tamper. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Is, is there an option in feeds to where um, if there's an issue with some items being imported that um, what's already been imported can be deleted? Because I had an issue where I was using feeds to import some items where um, some of the fields were wrong, and so some of the items didn't get imported. So I had to manually, the way I did, I manually deleted all yeah. the notes that had been imported. Is there a way to Yeah, so the question is whether we can skip an item, you mean? No, no, roll back. Or you want to roll back? Roll back. If, if, if only a uh, partial import happens, so for some reason some of the items don't get imported, mm -hmm. can you remove them automatically based on the fact that all the items did not get imported? 
Yes, I believe that that is uh, super easy uh, because that you can do you can do using the feed uh, admin interface. Uh, in the uh, setting of the feed, I think on the second tab, there is an option for you to delete on the existing item. One click and everything got run back, and then you can rerun the importation again. Yes. Uh, I know that um, there was a, a piece of shell in the dictionary, and usually it happens like in like a wizard world. Uh, what would it take to remove it from the table? Uh, the report is still at the ending, but could it break to see this presentation because it makes migration so much simpler? Uh, so I'm wondering if any of this work can help um, I'm not as actively involved right now in the maintaining of feeds, but uh, I believe the current solution is quite stable, even though it's not marked as stable. It's just um, a criteria there is pretty high on 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 bug fixing and all that. But um, I would I'd encourage you to to try it out and use it. I mean, we we have been using this in in production. It's been pretty pretty solid right now. So uh, yeah. thank you for coming today. Yeah, thank you so much.